All right, welcome back to the channel. Um, every one of my subscribers, thank you very much for tuning in and watching this video. And then thank you to everyone who isn't subscribed that is watching this video right now. Your support also very, um, helps me a lot. Um, per usual, with all my videos, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like on the video and then subscribe to my channel to see more content just like this. It really helps me out. Um, if you have any um, questions, suggestions, just general comments about what's happening in the video, please do not hesitate to leave a comment on said video and I will 100% um, respond to the comment in whatever way that I feel like I need to. Um, so this is um, day three of me, or this is, this is the fourth video, but this is day three of me um, bringing you all along with me while I write. While I write my play, let me, let me open it up. The way that these videos have been working is that like the entire first half, if not longer, is just me ranting to you all about my life and my problems because this is a good way for me to vent um, the frustrations that I feel on all the topics that I want to discuss and I feel like, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I feel like my problems are only my problems and that nobody else experiences the problems that are my problems. You know, like it's one of those things where like everybody struggles with dating and you know, when you're in college everybody struggles with or just in school in general everyone struggles with fitting in. Everybody struggles with making friends and you know, wondering if they're being left out. You know, how many times today have I wondered to myself if this is all worth it? that if I should just, maybe I should just move back in with my parents and quit college and um, just go work with my dad for 40 years or something, but I guess you could say that maybe it's different for my parents, because, I mean, so my dad didn't go to college because his um, he couldn't afford to. His family was not family did not make a lot of money despite how many despite how many um, siblings that my dad has and then my mom was able to go to college but just barely and um and so but then so like they weren't well off when it came to money my dad's worked the same job since he was 18 all the way to this day and he's old at this point okay he's not old but he's probably the oldest okay I don't know exactly my dad's in his 50s and so my dad's getting up there no um, so and it's funny because all that all that hard work that my dad has always put in has paid off because he makes a lot of money he makes like a lot of money and that's just that just shows what it just shows what working at the same job for you know she shows we're working at the same job for almost 40 years can do for you. And, to, and the funny thing about it is that like my dad, even though my dad had the opportunity to be the CEO of the company, he turned it down because that was too much drama for him. And I wonder about that, but you know, maybe it's a sign of my dad's character that he chose his own health over money. And so, I don't know. But on the opposite end, when it comes to relationship and dating, my mom and my dad have been, my mom and my dad have been married since they were in their early 20s. In fact, I'm not even sure if my mom was in her 20s when her and my dad got married. And so, while I'm on this track right now to, you know, graduate with my undergrad and then go get my graduates from someplace so that I can be a college, a college professor and make hopefully a lot of money being a college professor um, which will put me on the same playing field as my parents in terms of um, smart moves that lead towards um, that lead towards having a good money in the long term on the opposite end when it comes to um, when it comes to relationship stuff you know I'm, 
I'm 22 and you know I don't have a girlfriend I really hope that I can um, right now my ultimate goal I guess it's not an ultimate goal but right now my biggest goal I guess for relationship is that I can um, be married before I'm 30 because I don't know if, if I reach 30 and I'm still not married or I'm still not in some kind of serious committed relationship that is definitely heading towards marriage I might just fucking kill myself because I don't know with the, with the things that I desire right now not being married when I'm in my 30s makes me will make me feel like a failure because not being in a relationship is hard on me I have extreme issues with loneliness I think and almost 100% of that comes from the fact that I just don't have I'm just not romantically involved with anybody right now and online dating is just as hard as it's always been and so um, and that's how it is right now you know I'm talking to this girl who um, met her on dating app her snapchat was on there I um, I added her we get to talking everything is great and then um, she just um, basically straight up tells me that she doesn't want a relationship right now and it's just and I just I don't know one if you're not looking for a relationship why the hell are you on a dating app get the hell out and two why would you I mean I just I don't have an issue with being led on at least not if it makes me feel good but also it gets to a certain point where it becomes just morally wrong to do that to someone who has tried to do nothing but you know compliment you and make you feel good make you want to be around them because that's what I always try to do whenever I'm making an attempt to build a relationship you know I shower I'll try to shower the girl with compliments and you know tell her that she's pretty and <laughs> make tell her that she's pretty and I'll try my absolute hardest to be interested in all the things that she's interested in and I, I've gotten really good at holding a good conversation with these girls that I'm talking to by you know by giving more than just one word answers and by also um, asking thought-provoking questions that I would hopefully think will require more than a, a, an answer that's more than one word. And so, um, and it's a great way to weed out um, the ones that I would be more interested in versus the ones that I wouldn't be interested in. Because if I ask you this big thought-provoking question that deserves a fairly good answer and you just give me you know, one small sentence or even just a one word, well, then that's when I know that, you know, you and I probably aren't going to be compatible for each other. And then, and then I try my, as I said, I try my best to, um, <clears throat> I try my best to not give one word answers because I think that those are off-putting. As, as I said, I don't want to receive one word answers and so I'm not going to give any one word answers unless... It's like this thing where it's just like, I just poured my heart out to you. Um, and I told you how I feel about you and that I would love to go on this date and prove to you that I'm worth it. And I told you about all my insecurities and I did this and this and this and that. And I feel like that, I don't know, I don't know why. Um, or like I, I, I did this thing where it's just like if a girl poured her heart out to me and told her told me that she um, wanted me to give her a chance then yeah I would we would go on a date probably a couple dates try to make it work and if it just doesn't then it just doesn't but it's just like if I do that to you and then you respond with okay or you know lol or what or and I don't know any of those fucking any of those words or anything like that then it's just like why are you even here why did you even respond if that's all that you were going to say? Like, what the, what the hell? I just straight up don't get it. 
I just straight up don't get it. It makes zero sense to me. I don't understand it. I will never understand it. And it just goes back to my original question. I wish that dating apps would stop giving an option for, you know, just looking for friends or just looking for hookups. Because it's not a call, it's not a, it's not, it's not a friend finder app. It's not a hookup app. It's a dating app. That is what it's called. That is what it's literally, that's what it's categorized under in the, in the app store as a dating app. <clears throat> and so if you're not looking for at least something that's short term, like, you know, six months less or less than a year or something like that, <clears throat> then why are you even on that? What's the point? Are you just trying, are you trying to add to your body count? Are you just trying to break people's hearts? And that's the other thing that makes me upset about dating apps is like, I feel like, I feel like <clears throat> the girls that I talk to or the girls that I try to get matches with just don't get how much more difficult it is for a guy on a dating app. Let's see, I matched with a girl and I don't know, it obviously wasn't going to work out once this happened, but we sort of get into an argument. And I mean, it ended up with me saying to her that she just doesn't understand how hard it is for me as a guy to compete with a thousands, hundreds of thousands of other guys for her attention just so that she can then tell me that she doesn't want a relationship. I can, I can swipe right or I can give likes to a thousand girls and maybe one of them will not even really like me, not even like me back, just even view my profile. <laughs> but then it's just like, but I'm sure if I were to go onto a girl's profile and she was actively on the app and she's probably got a thousand, a thousand likes, a thousand messages and she probably ignores all of them. Not because those guys are fake or anything like that, but because, <clears throat> because I don't know. I just have no clue. The point I'm trying to make is that I feel like online dating is so much harder for men. And it gets even worse for men who are less than specimens. <coughs> I don't think that I'm particularly attractive or anything like that. I don't have chiseled abs. I don't have I don't have an amazing square jaw. I have a gap in my teeth. It's not huge. It's not something that helps crushes my looks or anything like that. You know, like I get on dating app and I spend what feels like it feels it feels like hours working on a profile, you know, typing out a good long intro telling them about me here's who I am here's what I do these are my interests this is what I want to do with my life when I get to a certain point <clears throat> you know I answer all these prompts about what my favorite movies are or what my favorite type of music is if I play video games or <clears throat> any of these other things you know that no I don't drink I don't smoke in any kind of way and then <clears throat> my profile gets finished I add plenty of pictures because they say that more pictures means you get gives you an increased chance of getting more views and then more matches <clears throat> and then I can start um, going into the swiping and everything like that and then I can't tell you the amount of times that I'll see written in a girl's profile on Bumble uh, I don't know what I'm doing here, but let's see what happens. It's just like it's like it's like it's like fucking copy and paste Copy and paste all these girls came out of a printer Because they all look the same. They've all got the same long blonde hair with them standing in front of some building with their arms fucking spread out And it's just like if you're not looking for something serious or at least something At least something that you want to try to make last for a certain amount of time that's you know strict and then just stop wasting people's time I just it infuriates me so much 
God, God, it infuriates me so much, and I just, and so, <clears throat> and so it's just like it's like one of those things where it's like, yeah, I don't have to use um, a dating app, but it's just summertime, school's out, I don't see any of my classmates, I don't work enough or go out enough to um, know the other people that I'm in town with or other things like that. I have crushes on a lot of my coworkers. Like there's this one girl that I know. She's just, she's blonde. She's so pretty. She's got an amazing smile. She's so easy to talk to. And it's one of those things where we talk and it feels like she's interested in what I'm saying. Or at the very least, she's at least listening to what I'm saying. And mm, there was one day where we were talking to each other because we were both working. We both came in, in the shift at the same time or something like that. And she left about an hour or two before I did because I was the closer for that night. And um, I wanted to talk more, but both of us just kept getting getting pulled away by work or customers or other things like that. On top of the fact that I'm struggling more and more recently with my confidence. And um, it gets to the point where I was going to try to ask her out on a date. And right as I go up to her to ask her, she's walking out the front door. And that was it for that night. And I've seen her again since then, but then it's just like, I feel like the point is moot at this point like I feel like I'd have to talk her up again and get a good conversation going before I would be able to build up my own confidence to the point where I could ask her out and then there's all these unknowns like does she even does she have a boyfriend is she even single is she even into guys she could be you know she could be a lesbian or she could be any other sort of thing maybe she's just not looking for a relationship right now maybe she thinks that she can't be in a relationship because she's too busy and this and that, maybe, maybe she's just straight up not attracted to me. It's entirely possible. And I just, it's this thing that builds up inside of me. And this crushing loneliness that I feel, it's getting to a point where it's getting almost worse by the day where I feel more alone. You know, I feel more and more alone as the time goes on and it's getting to the point where being around my coworkers and talking to them isn't really cheering me up playing games with my friends isn't doing any kind of great miracles for me or anything like that being around my family does nothing um you know it's just like one of those things where it's just like as I get older I'm hating the summertime more and more because if you don't have if you don't have a loved one or a lover or someone like that to spend it all with then it's just you in your apartment and you lay in your bed and you just I don't know stare at the ceiling yesterday Thursday I didn't get out of bed till 4 o'clock. Not because I had slept until 4 o'clock, because I stayed up super long the night before. But because I just... I woke up at noon, and I just... laid there. And it was one of the things where I was tired. I would roll over, and I kept on trying to fall back to sleep. But I just, I just didn't have the motivation to get out of bed. And so then four o'clock hits. Then four o'clock hits. And I realized that I have to, that I have to be uh, driving to the bowling center at six because it's about 30 to 40 minutes and I want to get there in time to pay and get my shoes on. So I finally get out of bed. You know, I'm talking to that same girl that I mentioned where she doesn't want a relationship, but I'm 
hoping that whatever date we go on goes so well that um, it can change her mind to at least give me a chance. And, you know, bowling was great. I shot 800, but also it's in a non-sanctioned league, so it, it doesn't really ring the same way. Um, and then, you know, Friday, when I'm recording this, Thursday night, I don't get back to my apartment till about 9.30, somewhere between 9.30 and 10. And then, um, <clears throat> I don't get back to my apartment until somewhere around 9.30 or 10. And, um, I get back. I am excited, because, you know, you, you always feel good when you bowl good, you know. The, the feeling isn't quite the same whenever you bowl a good score in a non-sanctioned league versus a regular sanctioned league. But you still feel good about it because, every, cause you know, you bowl a great series and everyone's clapping and cheering and it does make you feel good. So I get back to my apartment. I'm a little bit excited. I'm excited mainly because I'm talking to the girl that I already mentioned. And we're having what feels like a good conversation and I feel like she's interested in me. I feel like maybe I'm chipping away at this boulder, at, at this at this wall that has, you know, her heart on the other side. And so, and I get there, I get back to my apartment, and so I start to feel anxiety, like nervousness, because it's like I have to I have to open up the store tomorrow morning. And I'm scared that I'm gonna go to sleep too late and that I'm gonna not wake up in time and I'm gonna miss all of my alarms. Because I said like five of them. Each one was like 30 minutes apart because I'm trying to make sure that I'm awake enough to hear the alarm and then wake up and actually react to the alarm and turn it off, but then still asleep enough to be able to just roll over and close my eyes and still grab that extra shut eye. Um, so it's just like I get back to my apartment and I strip down and I lay in bed immediately I try to go to sleep I'm too anxious about missing my alarm and going to bed to um, going to bed um, I'm too anxious about missing my alarm and then missing work or being late for work because I mean I pride myself on always being early and so um, but then this anxiousness causes me to stay up <coughs> so then I realized well okay so I really haven't really had dinner yet so I am um, so I got out of bed I go into my kitchen I just make um, I just make two breakfast sandwiches like the breakfast sandwiches I ate in that one video from like a week or two ago. And so, um, that all works out. It's all fine and dandy. I watch some Markiplier play Uno. Um, while I'm eating my food, I'm contemplating to myself if I should make this video last night. Which I didn't make this video last night. I'm making this video, um, Technically, technically, it's Saturday morning at 1.05 a.m. And so, um, and then I just, and I get back into bed, and it's just, I don't know what it was. It's just, I must have just been so anxious or something else going on inside of me because I, because I was hot, and I kept rolling over and rolling over and rolling over, and I just can't do it. And then, I don't know. I just must have finally wore myself out at some point because before I knew it, I was asleep. And then, so I said, I fell asleep probably right at 4 o'clock, right at 4 a.m., which is just, you gotta hate it. And it probably doesn't help that I'd been staying up really late, like, I'm talking like 5 a.m., kind of late. But of course, I was off Wednesday and Thursday. 
I don't work on Thursdays because of bowling, and then I was just off Wednesday just because that's when I was given off. Um, and so, um, and so, um, yeah, I finally, finally fall asleep. Uh, wake up. I set, I set an alarm at 7.30, so I get three and a half hours. Wake up at 7.30, go back to sleep, wake up at 8. Um, do all this and that. I'm out of bed by 9.40. So I get a, I think I got like a solid six. Solid six. Or solid five and a half, maybe six hours. Which is fine. Whatever. Um, and so... And I better get my clothes on. I head to work. Everything's fine and dandy. Um, my that coworker that I have a crush on is is there. She's there in the store, but like I said, it's just I don't know. I wasn't feeling so motivated. Probably because I didn't get a lot of sleep. Apparently, that's apparently getting enough sleep is a big factor in how motivated you are. Because if you're tired, then you you don't want to exert as much effort. Because you don't want to drain your energy as much, and yeah. So, her and I still talk, and she's just got, I mean, just as usual, she's just got one of the most perfect, radiant smiles I've ever seen. Um, um, everything goes good. It's ridiculous. It's not a ridiculous morning. It's a pretty, I guess it's pretty standard for a Friday morning. The thing that sucked about today was that I worked a double shift because um, we're, you know, college town. So when all the seniors graduate, all the seniors pack up and get out. So we lost a bunch of um, We lost a bunch of staff um, during. Uh, we lost a bunch of staff during the um, <sighs> uh, right as the summer started. And so now we're very shorthanded. And we're hoping that um, we're hoping that a bunch of them can um <coughs> hoping that a bunch of uh, new hires will come in fill us out some more and then um <coughs> but be so because we're understaffed right now all every basically everybody's having to work a lot of double shifts and of course if you ask for one then that's a different thing but so I didn't ask for this double shift that I get double I get scheduled for a double which is just fine you know it's kind of the, it's kind of a thing that I expected to happen because of we're so we're so short staffed right now, and then um, <coughs> and then um, so yeah, three o'clock hits. I come back to my apartment, and you know I sit there in my apartment for about forty minutes, forty forty five minutes, just on the dating apps, you know, looking at girls' profiles, trying to find one that I really like. And one, one nice thing about dating apps is that a lot of them allow you to add um, your social medias in your um, profile description, which is a good way to get a connection really fast and figure out if it's going to work or not. Um, but most of the time, it most of the time it hasn't. Um, and so, go back to work at four. Pretty standard evening shift. Relatively easy. This is summertime. It's just, yeah. Summertime in a college town is always so chill. Said, said, the way we're talking about it, apparently. Apparently, the wrecks double. It's like the wrecks that we have in town double whenever um, the semester is in, which is very unsurprising. I'm surprised it's, I'm surprised it isn't, I'm surprised it doesn't triple whenever, whenever, um, all the college kids are here <clears throat> because they all go to freaking frat parties every night and then get blackout drunk and then they think that going and driving their crazy jacked up trucks is a good idea and then they wreck their car and then you know they cause thousands of dollars in property damage and people get injured and people die and then they all go out and do it again the next night because they're so good at making decisions <clears throat> and so yeah Get off work, you know. Come back to my apartment. Wonder what I should have for dinner, because literally, literally, it's 
I woke up this morning, went to work, came back to my apartment for 40 minutes and just relaxed on my phone, went back to work, came back to my apartment, realized that I had not eaten today. So I made breakfast sandwiches again because they're always good. They're always good, although I'm going to have to I'm going to have to go shopping or eat some of my ramen in the meantime because now I'm out of sausage patties. But they're not very expensive. I think it was like five or six dollars for that whole big package that I had. Especially since it's the especially since it's Walmart brand. So and Walmart Walmart stuff is pretty good. Like I mean like on the, on the Walmart Walmart brings the heat. And so, um So we at that point and then I come back and, you know, I'm um get back to my apartment, lay in bed talking to this girl nope. talking to this girl um she must have fell asleep at some point because she just randomly stopped texting me which is pretty normal you can usually tell if she's fell asleep or not by um when she doesn't um text me this late at night because i mean she's she's really busy or i think she is um and so um it's just me what I decided I was gonna do is okay. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna go eat. All right, so I had all pl my plan in my head. I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna cook dinner. Eat dinner while I watch. Um, I watch Good Mythical Mornings, the 2000th episode special that the, that happened today. Um, that was great. And I also watched the Good Mythical More for it as well, which is funny because I never watch Good Mythical More. And then I was like, okay, after I watch that, then I'm gonna come in here and make the video. And so here we are now. Yeah. Um, that's how my day went. Um, if you've made it this far into the video, please uh, leave in the comments how your day went. I'd love to know. I'd love to give you some advice on it if you want. Or if you have any questions that you want to ask me about uh, something you're doing with your life. So, but now we'll get to the, the writing, now that I've vented. Um, so I was thinking about today. There's definitely, I definitely want to change the end of Definitely want to change the end of scene one to something more, something much more traumatic. Um, the day that it happened, the day where, um, the day where I went to Olive Garden, ate Olive Garden by myself, then came back to my apartment and called my mom to complain about how, I'll, about how upset I am about my luck with dating. Um. If you know me personally, you know that I am not really a loud person. I don't do things that are loud. I don't yell or scream or you know, do anything like that. But there are, but you know, I'm just like everybody else, and I get stressed out by certain things. And there are just times when I just want to. There are times when I just want to scream and throw stuff and punch things and to make myself feel better. And this is one of those moments. I didn't actually, I didn't actually do that because it's, it's like even by myself, it's just not the kind of person that I really am. But then, so but this is what I wanted to do. So now I'm going to write that into the play. Uh, he takes off. He hangs up the phone and sits on his couch for a moment before standing up and throwing his phone. Before falling to his knees and sobbing. I spelled sitting. That's a new word. Okay. He hangs up the phone and sits on his couch for a moment before standing up and throwing his phone against the wall and screaming at the top of his lungs before falling to his knees and sobbing. Perfect. So the idea I have is that um, as as the main character is on his knees um, sobbing, he's like covering his face, but you can, it's like audible, audible moans of sadness from the, all the tears he's crying. And the idea is that um, the sound of the, the sound of the sun crying will be, um, will be um, 
Let's see. It will. It, <clears throat> the sound of the sun crying will fade out as um, as the transition music for the first scene um, comes in. So that was just the first minor change that I wanted to make. So I just. So now we're going to be moving into scene three. I just finished interlude two. So scene two goes. I love Charlie's chicken so much. I really wish that I had one that was closer to me. That would be nice, but then we wouldn't be able to get to eat it together as often. You're right about that. So do you plan on giving me any advice about what happened? Or did you just want me to come home and spend time with you? That needs a question. Well, both, honestly. You know I love spending time with you, but when you called me yesterday about what happened, I could tell that you were very upset. It's just like your father. You don't show very, that much emotion very often, which is why when you do, it's always for good reason. Speaking of which, how is Daddy? He's doing as well as he can, I guess. Nothing really changes in our lives unless you or your sister are involved. Now that both of you are out of the house, I feel like he isn't as stressed as he maybe used to be. Especially since we almost never argue anymore. I haven't told him about the girl who cheated on you or your date because I figured you wouldn't want to do that yourself. Alright then, that's good. I'm happy to hear that Daddy is doing fine. I really wish that I was better at talking to him. Especially since I'm probably not the son that he always wanted. I love sports, and I wish that I was good enough to make it big, but I just didn't have it in me, I guess. Although I am a pretty good bowler. No matter what life path you choose for yourself, your father will always be proud of you, just as long as you don't get involved in drugs or get arrested for anything. And I think that you should try to devote more of your time to bowling because you are really good. Your 300 ring is proof of that. You should have been there when I told your father that you shot 300. He damn near jumped into the air and shouted with excitement. I haven't seen him get that excited about anything since he heard you had made the high school baseball team. <laughs> really? It's really funny when I remember how stoic he always is. If you think that I don't show a lot of emotion, then that must mean that Daddy is an emotionless rock. You know I feel a lot better now. Thank you for taking me out, Mama. I love you. I love you too, baby. We should probably go home to see your father so that you can tell him yourself about what happened. You're probably right. And so, um, they begin to drive back home as the stage goes dark. Transitions into um, interlude number two which is where I uh, go off about how upset I was about um, my, my first, that was when I, that's when I finished the story of my first girlfriend. Okay, um, what, in what? What transition music do I want? So the idea that I have with all this um, transition music that I'm doing is I'm listing specific songs because these are songs that I've been listening to to um, to cheer myself up or or other things like that, you know, like um, let's see, I've been listening to a lot of Bruno Mars as I think he's just a generally great artist. I've been I've been completely obsessed with Leave the Door Open by um, Silk Sonic, which is his and Anderson Pax. Um, Super group, super group that they've been in, but I just I have so many other songs I'm on, so I'll use the one. So, um, the, um, let's see, so stage goes dark. Especially garage setting because my dad, my dad, my dad works on. He doesn't work on cars, but my dad um, knows how to work on cars. He's always doing stuff with his, with his pickup truck and um, <clears throat> with the Audi that he owns, and things like that. 
So my dad spends a lot of time in the garage. And so it's like, if I ever want to talk to my dad privately, you know, I have to go, I, 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 I could probably just go meet him in the garage and we can never do, we can do something like that. If, and if I don't do it in the garage, then we do it late at night. So, and so the reason why I'm placing um, this, why, the reason why I'm placing scene three in the garage is because um, chances are I wouldn't have waited probably this long to tell my dad about what has happened. Um, to tell my dad about what has happened Especially not when my mom was like, well, I guess we better go home so you can do that. And so chances are I probably would have done it not long after we walked through the door. So she was dark as sun gets off from his chair and we switched to a garage setting. Where we see sun approach his father. So, um, this may seem a little weird, but, um, so the, um, the, the, um, transition music that I'm picking for, um, between interlude two and scene three is, is, that's what I like by Bruno Mars. It's weird. I know it doesn't really fit the theme of the show so far, or it fits the theme of, the, it doesn't fit like the the whole heartbreak breakup type atmosphere that I've been going for but the whole point of all this transition music is that these are songs that I've been listening to in order to um, cheer myself up you know help me get past the breakup help me stay motivated for YouTube like this and all these other things and so So yeah, so yeah. So, so back when I first back when I first started got back into um, really putting videos up on the channel like I am now, um, that's what I liked by Bruno Mars was the song that I always listened to because it kept me motivated and it helped me remember that if I if I keep my nose to the grindstone and I work and I work for it, then you know I can be making trips to the beach and I can have money and I can go on vacations around the world with my family and the other people in my life that I love and I think that that and like that I think I love the thought of that and so it's a song I listen to to keep myself motivated you know so that's why I'm picking it so um,
Okay. So, I don't have scene three finished yet, but we're about to crest one hour on this video, so I definitely want to call it before there. Um, the next video that comes up about the um, vlog, about this vlog series, um, will be me um, probably finishing up scene three, or at the very least continuing the scene. Um, I won't reveal what I've written yet, just so I can keep you all on edge and interested, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, let's go uh, save it real quick. All right, and um, so, if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much. I know, this is probably a long haul listening to me complain and gripe about all my issues. But if you'd like to do the same right back to me, then I welcome you to do it. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel to see more of my content. It really helps me out, helps me make better content for all of you watching this. Um, and until next time, bye.